Coming up, China City volunteers visit seniors in Hubei province in preparation of their upcoming winter aid distribution. We take a ride on Taiwan Railway's CK-124 and meet the crew members that maintain the old steam engine. Welcome to Dial Headlines. I'm Mary Lee. Thank you for joining us. Although winter is a long ways off, volunteers in China have already started their home visitations in preparation for this year's winter aid distribution. Today, we bring our viewers to Hubei's Xiaogan, where volunteers have been extending their help since 2012. With the list provided by the government of the surrounding areas poor and needy now at 1,200 households, city volunteers are getting a head start on home visitations. Here in China's Hubei province, summer brings warm breeze and beautiful landscapes. Despite the scenery, however, life in these isolated villages is hard. Today, volunteers are visiting Songling village, whose population of 2000 is almost entirely seniors. Oh, Visitors are rare in these mountain villages. Thus, for Grandma Zhu, the volunteers' visit is a special treat. In her local dialect, she explains to volunteers her situation at home. Without their local governor and translator, volunteers would be at a loss to understand the grandmother's story. She was saying that some of the dishes she made have gone bad. For example, she makes a dish but can't finish it during lunch, then she will eat it again for dinner. Volunteers next visit Grandfather Deng, who suffers some cataracts in his right eye and glaucoma in his left. In this village, there are many solitary seniors that need our help. Sometimes you see them buying rice but are unable to carry the rice home. Sometimes they don't have money to buy clothing. So your help is really needed and very much appreciated. I thank you for it. After their visit to Songling village, volunteers travel to Dawu County government seat for a meeting with local governors. Volunteers describe what needs to be done from now until winter, when 1,200 families will be depending on the volunteers' love to get through the winter's cold. In the Philippines, following the Boho earthquake, the Tsuji Foundation has decided to provide prefabricated classrooms to needy schools around the island. Recently, construction teams from Taiwan traveled to Boho Island to help with the building process. To express their gratitude, many locals happily volunteered to lend a hand. At the Sapayang Gymnasium on Boho Island, construction volunteers from Taiwan and local residents work on the roofs of Tsuji's prefabricated classrooms. Not only the students are working, all of the community is working. The parents, the community, even they have no children in our school, but they have na nagtulong tulong. Masaya po kasi ano. I am very happy to be a part of this construction. I am very happy that people are willing to help us. To speed up the pace of the construction, Taiwan City volunteers are working around the clock to put on the finishing touches to the roofs. Seeing the volunteers' selfless dedication, many locals happily lend a hand, including members of the local Chinese community. People from out of town are here in Boho Island to help us. I am extremely happy for that. Thank you. These construction volunteers from Taiwan are doing their best to pass on their skills to local residents. Volunteers hope that residents can join them in the building of these prefabricated classrooms. To make sure the students have a safe place to continue their education, everyone works hand in hand despite the language barrier. We communicate with the locals through body language. The principal of Katibian High School says he has already been spreading the message of Tsuji's bamboo coin banks in his school, hoping to inspire students to cherish their blessings and pay the love forward. <laughs> Upon seeing the volunteers' arrival, students at the Santonino Primary School give them a warm welcome. 
To give children a safe place to study as soon as possible, locals have already finished setting up the framework of the classrooms. Picking up recyclables around the construction site is Daisy Basnino, whose children are currently students at the school. Thank you very much for giving me a role in the children. Besides parents helping out at the construction site, a group of youngsters are also there to contribute their share. Michael Racho says that his parents pay for his transportation costs so he can join the good cause. I'm very happy to be part of such a meaningful event. I hope to follow in the volunteers' footsteps and contribute my share where and when needed. Through building cities prefabricated classrooms, Boho Island residents not only are ensuring the next generation can study in a safe environment, but are also helping put the pain and heartache from the Boho earthquake behind them. In the aftermath of Typhoon Haiyan, the Cixi Foundation has not only helped improve living conditions and provide educational resources, but has also helped rebuild Sacred Heart Parish Church's exterior wall. The rebuilding was completed earlier in June, and in celebration of the event, the Archbishop of Palo invited Cixi volunteers to the ceremony and presented a plaque of appreciation and commended the volunteers for their loving care. where 80% of the population is Catholic, the church is where the people seek solace in times of trouble. When Typhoon Haiyan made landfall, churches that escaped without much damage became emergency shelters for residents. Kakoban Sacred Heart Parish Church looks fine now, but in the aftermath of Haiyan, its exterior wall was greatly damaged. Lending a hand, Siji assisted in rebuilding efforts, which were completed in June. To celebrate, Archbishop of Palo, John F. Du, invited City Philippines Chapter Director Alfredo Lee and other City volunteers to the event. of the church's appreciation for Tsuji's help, the Archbishop personally presented a plaque to the volunteers. Even if you are Catholics, you are Buddhists, you are helping us. And that love that you have is really, I would say, authentic love, the love of Jesus to humanity for everyone. The love and care of Tsuji volunteers will now forever resonate in the halls of this church and in the hearts of these people. In November of last year, Typhoon Haiyan devastated the Philippines, leaving Tacloban City hard hit. The disaster, however, also brought countless Tsuji volunteers into the region, offering local residents timely assistance. To extend the affinity between Tsuji and Tacloban citizens, one cable TV service provider decided to broadcast the ITV programs free of charge. Recently, the service provider signed a contract of cooperation with the Tsuji Philippines chapter in hopes of spreading more positive messages across the region. The Tsuji Philippines chapter officially signs a cooperation agreement with a local cable TV provider. Currently, some 200,000 residents in five regions in Leyte province are able to watch the ITV programs at home. Tsuji's work has reached several regions, and the volunteers are very compassionate. So I want to introduce Tsuji's charity work to as many residents as possible, to inspire more people to lend a hand to the less fortunate. Moved by Tsuji's compassion, local cable TV provider Lin Youjie agreed to broadcast the ITV programs free of charge. What touched him the most was the volunteers' quick response to the typhoon. They started. Three days after the typhoon, Tsuji volunteers came to Taklopon. Seeing how filthy and messy the disaster area was, the volunteers soon mobilized to help disaster survivors clean up their homes and encouraged everyone to follow suit. Several mainstream news channels like CNN and BBC are also broadcast on local cable TV. 
according to a survey. In the Philippines, on average, one person spends five hours a day watching TV. In other words, TV programs play an important role in Filipinos' daily lives. The Tucci Foundation for coming to the Philippines and help us a lot. And now that we have already this Ta'ai uh, station, we can see how our city has been devastated by the calamity. Ta'ai TV not only reported on Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines, but also other calamities across the globe. Wherever a disaster occurs, city volunteers will be the first there. Thank you, Master Zen Yin. The messages from the ITV helps us cultivate ourselves and teach us how to interact with our family. I feel that we can now talk directly to Sangren and she can talk directly to us. Thanks to this cable TV service provider, the ITV programs can now reach out to each and every household in Tacloban City, planting more seeds of love in the region. So faster and more advanced trains continue to debut and captivate our attention, there is just something very romantic about riding an old steam engine. In Taiwan, the Taiwan Railways Administration still has a steam locomotive built in 1936 that operates on special occasions. But in order to fire up the old iron horse, its maintenance crew has to start preparing four hours before launch. Here's more on the historic CK-124. Riding the historical steam locomotive CK124 down the old mountain line in central Taiwan. Our passengers will want to experience the good old days. Old rail fans will want to snatch some precious photos. However, to get the old iron horse moving again is no simple feat. Chen Zhenhua has served the Taiwan Railways Administration for four decades. About 10 years ago, he was put in charge of maintaining the steam locomotive with a crew of 20. The crew we have has no experience in this field, so we try to figure out as we work and learn as we go. Though the old engine is only fired up for special occasions and does not travel far, Chen and his crew still perform a thorough inspection every time, lubing the chassis and joints, and double-checking all launch protocols. This was built in 1936. We have kept it the way it was and operated in the same old fashion by burning coal, which is quite a complicated process. However, since he is in the rolling stock branch, Sen has to maintain all locomotives sent his way. But Chen says only the CK-124 gives a sense of accomplishment like no other. Once after we blew our whistle, I saw a woman about 50 to 60 years old started to cry. I ran over and apologized to her for scaring her, but she said she was just moved to tears for she hadn't heard that sound for decades. is a rigorous trial for CK124 and its crew. Perhaps we will have the rare opportunity to ride the old steam engine in the future. As you appreciate the history and beauty of the experience, do not forget there's a group of hardworking engineers who made it all possible. The 2014 Global Tsuji Team Leaders Training Seminar that took place from June 8th to June 12th at the Tsuji Banchao Grounds was attended by 469 volunteers from 21 countries. Many of the participants overcame personal obstacles to join the event this year. 
These obstacles, whether due to language, distance, or emotions, however, proved easy to overcome when the master's dharma was applied. Waking up early to attend a morning dharma study session was unheard of in the past for workaholic Lin Zhilong, but now tending to his spiritual needs is his top priority. From the first store to the peak of our success, my uncle and I owned over 60 storefronts. They spanned across the United States, in probably around 13 or 14 states. Moving to the United States from Taiwan, Lin's uncle was not only a business partner, but also a father figure. At the height of their business success, Lin's uncle was diagnosed with cancer and soon after passed away forcing Lin to face the impermanence of life and his future. I was only upset for one night. After I signed a contract selling my company, I left the office and headed home. Before I reached my house, my hands and legs were shaking. How was I able to let go and leave everything behind? It's because I had Master Zhenyun with me. Her Dharma was with me, guiding me every step of the way. Uncertain where his future lay, for Lin, Siji was the light at the end of his tunnel. He is now a devoted disciple of Master Zhen Yin, a life in which Lin sees himself living long and prosperously. When I got off the plane at Taoyuan Airport, I could feel the closeness of the Jingzi home. If I don't have time to return to the Jingzi abode in Hualien, it will be okay, because one can say that Taiwan is Tsuji's motherland, the home of Tsuji. Tsuji volunteer Zhen Chou Ti from the Netherlands also cherished the opportunity to participate in the team leaders' training seminar and now hopes to bring the spiritual sustenance she's received back home to share with others. Every time I return to Europe, I always want to pass on all I have learned in Taiwan in its entirety to others. Now I will do everything in my power to carry out this task, no longer just doing my best like before. Some people's affinity with Tsuji started with an illness, while others met Tsuji because they were impoverished. No matter the circumstances, I will continue to reach out to people. The Master does not give up on anyone, so we should follow her example and not give up either. Sara returns to Yang Shufen's heart when she thinks about her father-in-law who passed away three years ago. But it was when she met Siji that happiness began to fill her heart once again. Hoping to garner blessings for her father-in-law, Yang asked her family to adopt a vegetarian diet. Originally, I thought not killing animals was something we could do for my father-in-law. When I told my husband and children, they all agreed. <laughs> Not only promptly tuning in to Dai Radio every morning, Yang also promotes Tsuji in her community. She has even recruited her husband's help in translating Tsuji Monthly and other Jingzi publications into Japanese to share with her neighbors and friends. For instance, there was a good book in which Master Zheng Yin talked about how to deal with relationships within the family. But there wasn't a Japanese version of it, so I asked my husband to translate it into Japanese. I then shared sections of it with my study group because it was useful for everyone. As her emotional wounds have healed, Yang has begun devoting her time and energy to Tsuji, while also volunteering at her local Jinsu Books and Cafe. During Master Zhen Yin's visit to the Global Tsuji Team Leaders Training Seminar on June 11th, 11-year-old Yang Kai Chen, who has been accompanying the Master on her tour around the island, bravely went on stage to share his experiences with his fellow volunteers from around the globe. Sharing his experiences with the audience is 11-year-old Yang Kai Cheng, who despite his young age has taken the Dharma to heart after watching Master Zhen Yin's life wisdom on a daily basis. We need to hold on to our vow when walking the Tsuji path. When we have this goal in mind, we won't stray, of course. Despite his young age, Yang is determined to walk the Bodhisattva path. Behind his determination is his mother, who supports the boy every step of the way. 
The Buddha Dharma is good for our society, teenagers, and even children. The Dharma will help them develop a well-rounded character, which will eventually bring peace and harmony to society. Knowing that walking the Bodhisattva path is the right thing to do, Yang and his mother hope to inspire more people to join them, becoming Master Jinyan's helper. Thanks to these meetings, team leaders from across the globe have gained tremendous Dharma joy and now look forward to spreading Tzu's philosophy far and wide when they return home. In our next report, we meet volunteer Li Guan Di from Malaysia. Although unmarried herself, Li is like a mother to her nieces and nephews, for whom she cares for constantly. Bringing that sense, same sense of commitment and responsibility to Tsuji since becoming a Tsuji commissioner in 2007, Li has recruited 400 new Tsuji members. A participant in this year's Global Tsuji Team Leaders Training Seminar, let's now learn more of Li Guan Di's story. Right behind her niece as she makes her way to class is Tsuji volunteer Li Guan Di. Although caring for a child with Down syndrome is far from easy, Li does it all without a word of complaint. My daughter has a disability, but she looks after her as if she were her own daughter. <laughs> In addition to caring for her younger brother's daughter, Li has also been there for her older half-brother's family. After her brother passed away, it was Li that offered to look after her brother's three children so that her sister-in-law could work outside the home. During those hard days, she was our savior. On Mother's Day, we do everything in twos. For example, we buy two bouquets of flowers. As committed to Tsuji as she is to her family, after work, Li brings her niece along as she collects recyclables at a nearby mall. Inspired by her efforts and unwavering commitment, Li's family have themselves joined as city volunteers. When she encounters difficulties, we see that there is no thought of giving up. Neither does she complain about her situation. For the setbacks or hard work are nothing to be afraid of. We want them to feel that we are talking to them with a heart of joy and a proper perspective on life. That is very important. Li Guan Li became a Tsuji commissioner in 2007 and has since introduced 400 people to Tsuji. This year, she made a point to travel to Taiwan to attend this year's Global Tsuji Team Leaders Training Seminar, after which she will return to Malaysia to continue to teach and inspire those around her. At the end of the show, we join Dai TV CEO Tang Jianming and the team of the station staff members as they participate in the Shanghai TV Festival in China. This is the eighth consecutive year the company has attended the event to promote the wide variety of good quality programming shown on Dai TV. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching Dai Headlines. Bye. -bye.